Hello there, I'm Dee and I welcome you to my channel Candlelight Classics. Today I'm thrilled to be reading two short stories by the American authoress Elizabeth Bisland. She was an independent thinking, opinionated and adventurous lady, certainly quite ahead of her time back in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Bisland was undoubtedly a woman full of character, which is reflected in the way she wrote and her sharp musings on life and people. There is also some biography on Bisland at the conclusion of my reading, which you welcome to peruse. You will see on my channel that I've also released another reading of the two other short stories by Bisland. I hope you'll take the time to listen to that one too. So thank you for joining me. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the words of Elizabeth Bisland. An Autumn Impulse A bird sat on the balcony rail just outside my window today gossiping with an unseen neighbor perched somewhere out of my range of vision. He was a rather grimy little person, and as the day was cold, he made a perfect puffball of himself. I listened to them conversing with great interest, feeling, as I always do when I hear birds talk, that if only I paid a little closer attention, it would be possible to understand all they say. It is somewhat the sensation one has in overhearing a rapid dialogue in French, which one is too lazy to try to follow. When I came through, I think I left some of the doors ajar behind me, and I remember my bird avatar especially clearly. Even yet, when autumn comes, I am pursued by a fluttering longing to arise and go southward. I feel that something beautiful, some wide splendid ecstasy is calling me if I will only go to meet it. I can remember having that sensation in my earliest childhood. In my dreams I often fly with beautiful swoopings and balancings, with sudden confident droppings through the elastic air. And sometimes I am in an enclosed place, beating my wings against the bounds, knowing no other way to get out. When I look at birds, they seem to know me. Not in the way of a mere creature who puts out crumbs in convenient breakfasting places, or who brings strawberries to one's cage, but they meet my eye with that familiarity one sees in the glance of brothers. A look of mutual understanding my own senses of kinship of the closest character. I understand how they regard things, what they think and feel. I wish I could so concentrate my attention as to catch what this grimy little citizen is saying to his fellow on the nearby ledge. Oh, if I could. What a flood of other memories it would restore that are now dim and confused. Concerning elbows on the table. A was here today. What a formal little soul it is. She can never begin where she left off. One has her acquaintance to make all over again each time she comes. The depth, 
the heights of our propriety. Always that extremely well-behaved look, which never changes. P says A is too modest to take off and put on expressions in public. One wonders if there is any privacy so entire that she would consider dishevelment on behaviour permissible. How exhausting to herself such flawless respectability must become. She is the concentrated essence of the bourgeois. A savage can be natural. He knows nothing else. But when his eyes are opened and he sees himself to be naked, the reign of the fig leaf begins. There is something pathetic in that long era of profound distrust of his own nature and impulses. What does he think he would do if he let himself go? Perhaps he is, underneath all that propriety, still so close to savagery that he dare not trust himself to be natural lest he instantly relapse into barbarism. After many generations of breeding, he dare be savage and free again if he like. He is so sure of himself. As Mrs. B says, he becomes at last a man who can afford to put his elbows on the table. When he reaches such a point, I notice he is always impatient of the constraint of those still bound by the shackles of self-conscious propriety, forgetting that he owes his own freedom to many generations that labored in bonds, struggling to slay or subdue the savage.